Getting back to the multiplier effect for a moment. It's determined by the behaviour of households and their marginal propensity to consume. Before we included an income tax, if we assumed a marginal propensity to consume of 0.8, an increase of 100 in autonomous spending would lead to a rise of 100 in output and income, followed by an increase of 80 in consumption spending. Now, let's see what happens if we introduce a 10% income tax. Out of an increase of 100 million rand in income, the household must first pay 10% as income tax, leaving them with 90% of their income. Why? And of this, they're only going to spend 80% their marginal propensity to consume, which leaves us now with an increase in consumption of only 72. In this chart, we can see the multiplier in effect. Before taxation, a rise in income of 100 increases consumption spending by 80, which boosts production and income by another 80, of which we spend 80%, so 64. And as the multiplier continues to push output and income, consumption spending then goes up by 51.2, then 40.96, and so on. But with a 10% income tax, consumption spending increases by only 72, and then by 51, then by 37, and so on. The multiplier changes from 1 over 1 minus the marginal propensity to consume to 1 over 1 minus the marginal propensity to consume times 1 less the tax rate. Our equilibrium level of income now changes from 1 over 1 minus C times autonomous spending to 1 over 1 minus C times 1 minus T times autonomous spending. This reinforces what really is just common sense. The introduction of income tax reduces the multiplier.